just for a second, just close your eyes and let's lift up God this morning. Thank Him for all of His blessings. Let the Holy Spirit's power move in you this morning. There's a power of the Holy Spirit that wishes to move in us today. Hallelujah, Lord, we give you praise. Bless your holy name. Lift up broken hearts today, O oh God. Oh, bless those who are down and discouraged, Lord. Let them hear the word of the Lord today that says, We are yours, God. We are yours. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We can do Immeasurable Hallelujah. things. Hallelujah. We can do anything through you. There's some of you this morning that have been worrying yourself sick, and the Holy Spirit says today, if you will surrender what you're worrying about to me, you will have this peace that's flooding this house right now. Lift up your burden to the Lord. Cast it to Him. He'll never suffer His righteous ones to be moved. Oh, God, we give you our trouble yes. and our trials, God. We yes. thank you. You're making, hallelujah, miracles out of our mess, hallelujah. oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you praise this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You don't have to carry this burden yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the hallelujah. Lord. I am in no hurry, y'all. Bears don't play today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and honor this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, this is the place where His Spirit yes. meets your spirit. Close your eyes and yes. listen to the, hint, the Holy Spirit's voice this morning. Listen oh. to Him. Hallelujah. Let Him love on you a little bit. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God. Holy Dove of God, rest upon us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your Jesus. love, O oh God. Thank you for making me your son, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we bless you, Lord. Give you honor this morning. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Serve at your call, O oh God. We're here at your command, O oh God. We obey you this morning, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Oh, we praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hope you catch. I hope you catch the sweet presence of God that's here today. Amen. Don't let this opportunity pass you by, right? Amen. Jesus walked by many people. Some of them never received a thing from him. This morning he's here. Receive from the Holy Spirit today. Whatever it is you have need of. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you need to let go your worry and your fear. Amen. Quit trying to scenario out what's going to happen in the future and let God take your future. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all get that or not? I don't know. You're all pretty Amen, quiet yeah. this morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow, it's so quiet. <laughs> Amen. It's God's little library this morning. You got to be quiet in the library. 
<laughs> Set Amen. Peace. Hallelujah. Well, let's do this before we change the order of service. One more time. As Brett just plays softly a few chords here, let's just lift our hands one more time. Just give him thanks this morning. You're here, you're not in jail. Yes. Hallelujah. You're here and you're not sick. Yes. Hallelujah. You're here. Hallelujah. And so is Jesus. Yes. Father, we just praise you. We give you one little last praise and hug, Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For making us your kids. Yes. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that's in me bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you for the opportunity today to give you praise and honor. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Man, I feel refreshed. I needed this today. I feel refreshed in the Lord. Yes. Father, we praise you this morning, Lord. Tell you what, take your hand, put it on the shoulder of the person next to you, and just pray something good for them right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray for this worship team. Continue to bless them, Lord. Touch their hearts. Encourage them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for laying your hand on them, God. Calling them by name, before you were, they were even in their mother's womb, Lord, you formed them to serve you and to bless you so that you might bless them. Thank you, Father. We pray for everyone this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah. All right. Hug one more person. Tell them bless you in Jesus' name and you can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, bless your holy name, hallelujah, amen. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I think we got about the best worship band around. But y'all can say amen. They did awesome this morning. Thank God for them. Amen. Well, you can go ahead and be seated if you can. Have somebody turn the house lights up back there if you would. Hallelujah. I think they're on the slider right now. Just lift up the slider on the side. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Will. Amen. Praise God. Good to see you all here today in divine presence. Hallelujah. I think this young man down front here has had a great morning, don't you? I was watching him worship this morning, and he was worshiping and dancing and shaking his head. He still can't stop. And uh, part of that's little boy. But, I, you know, the Holy Spirit said, you know, you got that little boy living in you still. Yes. Wants to worship God without anybody, not worry about what anybody says. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to have Ty come and we'll do this morning's offering. Amen. Give to the Lord that which he's given back to you. Amen. I want to thank everybody that worked yesterday to uh, pass out, what was it, 22 boxes? 22, 23 boxes of food yesterday. Thank you guys for all your help. Give them a hand. We appreciate everybody that pitched in. We had nearly as many workers as we did people we were handing them out to. That was awesome. We had a great time of fellowship. It was fun. It was 60 degrees yesterday, so it was an awesome time. Thank you all. But sacrifice your time and give of yourselves to give to people who you can never get anything back. That's the whole idea. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for others. Amen? Amen. When you do something for others, that's God moving in you. Hallelujah. We know God's moving. We do things for other people without any kind of desire for something to get back. You know what I'm saying? 
Hallelujah. Did you all get that? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, if you've got your offering, let's lift this up before the Lord. Mine just went, flew down to Scott, so Scott, you can lift it up for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift these up before God this morning and ask His blessed Father. We come to you humbly this morning in the name of Jesus. And again, we ask you to bless what we give, Lord. Yeah. Press it down, shake it together, yeah. and let it run over into your people's yeah. lives in so many ways. Jesus. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us. Yeah. We bless you for yeah. it this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 A few announcements this morning that I want to do uh, just hit for you. We had talked about having Sunday night service in February. And the way we were going to do this is the first three Sundays of the month, we're going to have service at 6. However, in February, the 5th is Super Bowl Sunday. The 12th is uh, the Winter Jam concert over in Peoria. And uh, that only gives us one time. So we're going to start in March. So the first three Sundays in March, we will have Sunday night service. Now, the, su the service will consist of some praise and worship possibly, but mostly study in the Word and really breaking open the book and getting really into it like we do on Wednesdays, but maybe even in more detail. So be praying about that if you'd like to come out. It'll be about an hour on uh, Sunday evenings from 6 to about 7. Of course, we'll let the Holy Spirit lead, won't we? Amen. We might be here till 10 o'clock. Who knows? You never know what the Holy Spirit's going to do. Amen. I'm glad. I don't want to know. I want him to go ahead and do what he wants to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. What else we got going on? Um, yeah, there'll be no kids' zone or youth group on that Sunday night service. That'll just be for the adults. So um, <clears throat> don't forget Wednesday night Bible study. This coming Wednesday, Scott will be sharing. And uh, that's at uh, 6.30. We have praise and worship, youth group, and kid zone at that time. Amen. All right. Uh, if you want to bring canned goods, there's a box out here, and there's also a piece of luggage. If you'd like to put canned goods out there to give away, we'd really appreciate that. Um, you could bring a non-perishable item every Sunday of the month if you want to. Stick it in there, and then we uh, give it out. Every third Sunday of the month, we have our what we call our blessing day down at the blessing room, which, by the way, is almost completed. We've had some water issues, flat roof. Shane's got it almost done, and uh, we'll be back in there again shortly and soonly. So don't worry about it. It's all good. Amen. Amen. What am I missing? Uh, we're supposed to have prayer today at 6. We will uh, meet after service this morning. If you're going to be here at 6, we'll just plan on doing that today. And New Life t-shirts are here. If you ordered one, uh, they're there. All you have to do is pay your 10 bucks and you can get your t-shirt. Connie got them. So I don't know where Connie went. She must be back with the kids. So uh, if you'd like to get that t-shirt, it's 10 bucks. Amen. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll have t-shirt Sunday. All right, financial donation sheets. If you file your taxes and you need a printout of what you've given in the last year. Connie's got those all done. She's actually she's Johnny on the spot this year, or Connie on the spot. Um, she's got the financial statements from the year last year for the church. We will have a business meeting at some point, and we will talk about uh, where the finances have gone in the last year. We want you to know. We don't hide that. It's fully disclosed. We'll let you know what we took in and what we paid out. Amen. Um, what else? If you want to help out Maria, she's our uh, lady, little girl. I think she's 12 years old, and she lives in Mozambique. We're providing her school uh, fees, uh, books, food, clothing, and uh, water for $35 a month. If you'd like to volunteer to, to pay $35 a month for her, donate it some month, just see Connie and let her know. Amen. I'm looking down here. Uh, Winter Jam has a sign-up, too. Thank you, Scott. If you would like to ride together to Winter Jam, there's a sign-up sheet, uh, and you guys can all leave together when you go do that. Amen. Am I missing anything or forgetting anything? Yes. Recovery group. That's right. Thank you, Will. Um, while I'm on the subject of recovery, uh, we have had Celebrate Recovery. Uh, Wendy Burris and uh, Mallory have both really pitched in to help lead that. And uh, recently, Will came to me and said, man, I really read through the leadership guide, and I really feel like the Holy Spirit's calling me to help uh, do whatever I can to get it going. And I want you to know recovery is an awesome thing. I, I thought many times about taking the books and teaching out of them. 
because the four books in the Celebrate Recovery program, they cover everything a Christian needs to know on how to walk with God. They really do. Lesson one is don't live in denial, right? How many times do we do that? Oh, God, I can't understand why things aren't working out even though I'm doing it my way. Well, there's a reason why they're not working out, because you're doing them your way. So you have to learn how to give up, how to surrender. There's a thing called the serenity prayer. Does anybody know what that says? God, grant me the serenity, right? To do what? Yeah. To accept the things I cannot change. Now, I don't want to be negative to you, but you can't change very much. And neither can I. So it behooves us to go to the one who can change it all. And the only way that can start is when you acknowledge the fact that you can't change anything. Right? I accept the things I can't change. Right? Hallelujah. But I have the courage to change the things that God shows me that I can. And the wisdom to know the difference for today. And the rest of that is huge, that prayer. So I'm going to have Will come. He just wants to share with you a few thoughts and ask you to pray. Um, and eventually he's going to have to share his testimony, even though he, he's kind of... Yes, I know. Yes, I'm yes you know. <laughs> I'm still working on that. Amen. I am. Um, I, well, like I said, I've had this feeling in my heart that it's just something I need to do. And I've been thinking about how I can get this across to you is to realize and understand something I have since starting this and going through the program myself. And I know what you all are thinking. Celebrate recovery is for those people. And those people being with, you know, like a sexual past, sexual addiction, sexual abuse, an ex-con, divorced, relationship issues or problem, alcohol, a pothead, or a drug addict. That's what everybody mostly thinks of recovery. So I prayed and I just had this feeling on my heart that it was something I need to do is just to give you a little piece of myself about what I learned with recovery. So first, I want to tell you a story to set a stage, to get you to think. Eight years ago, after being diagnosed with PTSD and being on some serious medications, I got a brand new laptop. Well, like any other new toy and technology, I had to play with it. I wanted to learn how to use it. Well, in that process, I somehow deleted most of the operating systems off the computer. Oops. So what do I do with it? Well, you know. Warranty does not cover stupid. It don't. <laughs> so I had my wife fix it, Talitha. It took her about six hours to get everything back up and running. Well, you know, that for me, technology is not my forte. That's not the story. I just wanted to set the stage. The story is, last Thursday night while Talitha and I were talking on the phone, she's got a new one. It does video chat. She wanted to video chat. She called me. I tried answering three times. It hung up three times. And then it did something to my phone that I just did not know how to fix. And with that being said, it led to, you know, me getting angry. I wasn't angry, but I got frustrated, annoyed, upset. Why? Well, the thing is, the reason why it did that is for me, technology was a trigger for past feelings of hurt over a loved one who for years made me feel stupid, inadequate over technology. That's my hurt. My hang-up is the technology because of it. My habit is going to being annoyed, aggravated, frustrated, and then it leads to anger. The anger would then lead to rage. Okay? So I want everybody here, my brothers and sisters, to think outside of the box. What is it in your life that causes you hurts, hang-ups, and habits that affects those around you? Because that is what recovery is all about. It's not about 
those people. Every one of us have hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Yes. Celebrate Recovery is for anyone. So anyone who feels a calling to either come to the recovery groups or lead in any way or be in a leadership position, a sponsor, or even an accountability partner for those already going through the group, please come see either Mallory, Pastor Mark, or myself. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, and I'll tell you, Will, it's just, as many of you have seen, man, it's like somebody turned the, the porch light on in his heart. I mean, he's just uh, really, really excited about doing this. And I want to encourage you, you know, we're going to get all, we're going to get a, a lot of new material again. If you'd like to be part of this group, it meets on Fridays right now from 6 to about 7. And it is a good way to find out the root causes of many of the issues of your life. And I just appreciate Will and Wendy and Mallory for just amen. committing themselves to doing this. So, amen. He's got flyers that Connie produced. If you'd like a few of them to hand out, that'd be wonderful. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Will. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, brother. Well, let's go ahead and dismiss the kids to Kids Zone at this time. Amen. Amen. It's a time to worship and praise God when the kids go to Kids Zone. Bless those workers back there, Lord. Help them. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father God. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hug one more person before you're seated. <coughs> amen. What a great family. <clears throat> what a great family. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I've got so much on my heart this morning that I want to share with you so many different things that um, <clears throat> I uh, still hear Steve's voice in the back of my head, our brother Steve Clanton, who's now with the Lord. Quit trying to do it all in one Sunday. Okay, brother. Amen. Amen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his uh, advice and just try to do the KISS method. Keep it simple, silly. Not stupid, silly. So I'm going to start with the laugh meter is on. This is Ashley approved, so it's got to be funny. So if it's not, it's her fault. No, I'm just kidding. A man drives into a gas station. <clears throat> the attendant goes to fill his tank and notices the guy's got five penguins in the back seat of his car. I know none of you have ever heard this before. He says, hey, how come you got five penguins in your car? The driver says, I don't know. I just uh, stopped at the light back there, and they all climbed into my car, and I don't know what to do with them. And the, the attendant says, for, so thanks for a second, says, I'll tell you what, why don't you just take them to the zoo? It would be a good, uh, good place for them to go. The driver says, that's a good idea. I'd do that. About a week later, uh, the same driver pulls into the gas station. The attendant sees the same five penguins in the back seat. Only now they're wearing sunglasses. So the attendant says, what are you doing? I thought I told you to take those, two, those five penguins to the zoo. And he said, we did. We had such a great time. This week we're going to the beach. So <laughs> there you go, Ashley. All right. I'm funneling every joke through Ashley, and she knows. She has a high-quality sense for good humor. Um, this morning, I'm going to hit on some things, and uh, we've been building this, and I, I see the Lord building this, but it's called More Keys to Spiritual Growth too. But I want to say one thing to you all, and I want to apologize off the top, and that is that uh, I don't want to be repetitive, and if you feel like that's what this is, then I just want to encourage yourself to humble yourself, because if for some reason God wants to hear, wants you to hear this over and over again. I don't know about you, but as I've been reading this and studying this, I've seen these things many times. But it's like God's all of a sudden turned the light on, and it's like I'm seeing these almost for the first time. And that's huge for me. This is out of the New Living Translation. 
Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth that you've been taught. Amen? The uh, Message Bible says, because the stakes are so high, even though you're up to date on all this truth and practice it inside and out, I'm not going to let up for a minute in calling it to your attention. So this morning, like the scripture says, I'm going to stir up your holy minds to remember these issues and these fundamental principles of our faith. I am convinced that we probably don't have these as solid as we need them, or the Holy Spirit would not be instructing me to speak to you about these things, okay? By the way, that's in 2 Peter chapter 1. And this is the NLT says, it's only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. So I will work hard to make sure you always, always remember these things after I'm gone. There'll be a time when somebody else is going to be up here speaking the word. I won't be here forever, amen? There'll be a time when God ordains someone else to take this place. But for the time I have, and I have no idea how long that is, this might be the last Sunday, I don't know. But I'm going to fulfill the calling that God has put in my heart. And not your encouragement or discouragement, not the enemy trying to keep me from doing it, is going to stop me from doing this. I hope you hear this in your heart for you. I don't know what God's put in your heart, but quit letting people tell you you can't do it. And quit letting the enemy tell you you're not good enough. That is a lie. It's time to just say no to that crap, and let's go forward with God. Because there's a calling on all of you to do something for Him. You say, how do you know that? I don't feel like I... Yes, you do have something, because the Scripture says you have. Man, I just feel this in my heart this morning. I, we don't have tomorrow. You can't say, well, I'll do that next year, or next week, or next month, or some other... You need to get serious about where you're at with the Lord God, and you need to say, Father, I'm going to pursue you with everything I got in me, come hell or high water. And I want you to know if you say that, hell will come against you and the high water will come against you too. Yeah. If you ain't doing nothing for God, the enemy's going to leave you alone. If you've got a battle going on, it's because you're finally deciding maybe it's time I step out and walk with God with all I got. Yeah. A 10% effort ain't going to do. Yeah. Right? right? I'm telling you, if you would have played football uh, for that guy that used to coach the Green Bay Packers back in the day, yeah. Mr. Lombardi, Mr. Lombardi whom the, the Super Bowl trophy is named after, you give him a 10% effort, he gives you 100% of his foot right on your behind. And God's telling you to do this Christian thing. You rest and you trust, but you act. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. An important question for 2017, are you satisfied with where you're at spiritually? No. No. Do you hunger for more of God? Yes. Yes. I pray that you do. Do you hunger for more of God than, let's say, anything else? Yes. Anything else. Well, I'll tell you what, that's going to get tested. Yes. Peter wrote about this in a way to do just that, to be growing, to find the fulfillment of your life in all the areas of your life, to find the fulfillment you want in your life in all the areas of your life, not just spiritual. Ephesians 5.14 is a powerful scripture this morning. And it says this to the church. Remember, the book of Ephesians was not written to the world. We, we read this last night. Gary and Will and I were standing there, and this morning the Holy Spirit reminded me of it again, and that's this. Church, wake up. Quit falling asleep. Quit slipping your gear into neutral. Quit going into park. Quit trying to walk with God halfway. Let's get our car in gear. Let's get in gear. Let's go. Let's start pursuing Him no matter what. And not on our own terms. Right? Well, God, if you do it this way, I'll... No. God's going to do it His way, and you're going to say this to God. I give up. I surrender. Your will be done, not mine. I don't care how old you are. That's a good word. There's a God-shaped hole in all of us that cannot be filled, and Christians try to do this. We try to fill our Christian life with stuff, with relationships, with money, with success, and it doesn't fit. I don't care, my brothers and sisters. You can take all the success you want in the world and stick it in that round hole with that square peg, and it ain't going in. Wake up. 
O sleeper, and let the light of Christ shine upon you. What's that mean? Get out of your sleep. Let's go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him break forth in you. That the eyes of your understanding would start to open up and be enlightened. Yeah. That you might know the hope of the calling you have personally to do what God's called you to do in Him. Yeah. What hope you have. I hope someday I play or sing or I hope I write or I hope I speak or I hope I can help. Do it. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. The hope of the calling that God has in you. That's just a scratch of the surface. There's so much more to that. The hope of His calling and the riches of His inheritance of the saints. Now, God's got an inheritance. You know what that is, right? It's us. But we have an inheritance too. And I got this out today because Connie gave this to me. Because this is you. You are a treasure chest full of the blessings of God. We have this treasure... Scott ministered on this not too long ago. We have this treasure in jars of clay, or in this case, this treasure chest. That the excellency be of who? Of who? It's His excellency in us, right? And we're going to open this today because I put stuff in here to show you some of the things God's put in you. And it's time for you to open it up and start discovering all these wonderful things. Amen? Amen? So that when you start crying like I do, oh God, why is this going wrong? It's because I'm not listening and I'm not using the tools that God has given me. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Only the true life of Jesus received as a gift of grace and accepted by faith can fill the void in your life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So brother or sister, if you're trying to fill it with chemicals, maybe some of you still smoking pot, think it's okay. I want you to know this morning it's not okay. Ooh, you got quiet. I don't care if society says it's okay. Society says aborting a baby until it's born is okay. That ain't right. And I don't care if they get a million people to march about it. It's still wrong. And it's destructive, and it's destroying our nation. Over a million babies are killed every year. I'm sorry, if you don't like that, that's too bad. I think it's wrong. And I think it's wrong according to this. I didn't mean to say that today, but I just want you to know that just because society gets together and says it's right doesn't make it right. I don't care what they say. This is what's right. And I believe in this word, and I trust in the God that wrote it. And I know that he lives within me. Amen. And I want to make my judgments. I want to have good vision and understanding, not according to what the world says, but according to what the book says, by the Spirit. Yes. Amen. The fulfillment of all of this is actually living it. You say, how do I live it? You don't worry. You don't fret. You quit cussing. You quit screaming. You quit angering. You get to the root of the problem and you let it go. Amen? Yes. Next slide, please. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you're a listener when you're anything but letting the word go in one ear and where? Out the other. You got to act on what you hear. And I'm not talking about doing the bad things. I'm talking about your attitudes and your beliefs. Get them right before God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Is it dry in here or is it me? It's just me. You got to just do it. Amen. That Nike swish means victory. You'll do it when you act and you'll have victory if you do it and you'll act. Hallelujah. Without, listen to this. This is where the church is at in a lot of ways, without compromise. How much are you compromising in your life? I find sometimes every challenge I run into is a, a question of God to me, are you going to compromise here or not? Amen? Hallelujah. I had, uh, you know, Saturday nights for me are, are nights I really try to rest and make things quite quiet because I want to focus on what I'm going to do the next morning. and I want to get myself in a spiritual mindset. Amen? Uh, hey, you should do that too. Yeah. But anyway, try not to watch any goofy movies. I don't want any thoughts and anything's coming into my mind. I try to really not watch much TV. <clears throat> I don't know if you know this or not, but they did interviews of the producers of most of these TV shows and movies. 
90% of them don't even believe in God. 80% of them have never go to church and don't know anybody that does. There's a lot of junk that's coming through our TVs and our movies that are coming in and our music. I'm sorry that it's that way. I wish it was all sunshine and rainbow. It just ain't. So you're going to have to turn some of it off or it's going to pollute your mind. It's going to make you want to compromise your faith. Hallelujah. We need to get victory over those things and live as the light in this dark world. You hearing me? You can't live like anybody else lives anymore. God doesn't want you to. I don't want to. You shouldn't want to. We want to live different, right? Yes. Not living like the world does. We want to live as light in the world, right? Yes. Is there fruit showing up out of your life or has compromise just ruined it all? Is there fruit of your faith showing in your life? Or is the, is the enemy snuffing it out? Are you just not living it? You're compromising your life and it's stolen that fruit away from you? I pray that your goal is to live a life of no compromise with the world, no compromise with the enemy, and certainly no compromise with your old nature. Amen? Amen. True, lasting fulfillment in all of our life is not a girlfriend, is not a good car, is not a great paying job. My brothers and sisters, Christians, are making the mistake of thinking this, of all my family being at church at the same time. That's great. That's not what it's about. No. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember, and my mom remembers this several years ago, when my nephew and my niece and my son were all in the worship band at the same time. I stood in the back and cried like a baby. And you know what the Holy Spirit told me? Enjoy this moment because it won't last forever. And it didn't. So I'll tell you what, I still rejoice in that. I'm not saying they're not served. They serve the Lord. I'm just telling you, that was a wonderful, wonderful time. But you know what? It's not about that. It's about me serving Him. It's about me no compromising Him. Right? I mean, I love your family. Some of you have great families, and I love all those little kids and their snotty noses, and I can give them back to you. But I'm just so thankful for all of your, ki your children, all of them, small and large. Hallelujah. In fact, one of them is celebrating his birthday today, uh, little Blakey. Little Blakey's going to be how old? Three years old. Doesn't seem possible, you guys. Wow. It is crazy. And uh, Brett and Sarah are such good parents, and they love boys, so they brought an extra boy with them, I think, this morning, didn't you? Two extra boys. Yeah, you guys, somebody needs to talk to him after service today. <laughs> no, they just love kids, and I love it that they do, and they're trying to be a Christian influence. They're, they're activating their faith by doing that. That's wonderful. And I'm glad of that for all of you that do, are doing those things. Amen? Hallelujah. So I pray that your goal is to live a life of no compromise, that you'll find fulfillment in one thing and one thing only, and that is your spiritual life, period. Everything. Everything you want to have in your life does not come from you trying to get it. It get, comes from you giving it up yeah, and good. trying to a, a, attain and obtain Father God Himself. We, we studied last night out of the Purpose Driven Life that we were created by God before the foundations of the world to do what we want to do and do our own thing. No. no. We were founded and made by God before the foundation and the beginning of the earth because He wants us to love Him. Yes. And He gave you a will. And you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Christians sometimes are the most willful people, my God in heaven. And I'm one of you, so I'm not saying I ain't no different. I am too. Yes. But bless God, I want to give Him my will. I'm sick of my own. Amen. Having my will is like driving a car into the ditch and staying there and spinning my wheels in the mud. And I don't want to do that. Everything in your life stems and is rooted from your realization of your position as a believer in Jesus Christ. Everything comes from what you know of who you are as a believer in Christ. Amen. That will destroy self-doubt and lack of confidence. Hallelujah. Yeah. Last week we covered the two major foundations that we all need solidified within and that's namely grace and faith. It's funny how God gives you little, little goodies. You ever, you ever get little goodies from God to reinforce what you've been thinking? Yeah. The other day, Bree came into the office, and you know Bree, Bree Clanton? She got stung yesterday on her hand, so pray for her. She's, 
she had a hard time. But anyway, she came into my office. She said, look, I got a new cross. And I said, that is beautiful. And I looked on the back of it, and it said grace and faith. Grace and faith. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? God was just telling me that's all you need to understand. As a foundation of your faith is God's grace and how your faith is huge, so huge. In Hebrews 6.1, Paul lists the most important issues first. Hebrews 6.1 says, let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let's go on instead and become mature in our understanding. And I say amen to that. How about you? I say i got to do that too. i got a long ways to go. I am so unformed, it's unbelievable. Hallelujah. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. That's called grace and faith. You've got to get them down in your heart and understand what they are. When you do, you'll never judge another person for what they do wrong ever again. You'll never look down your nose and think they don't got it yet because you know by grace and by faith that's the only way you got it. There ain't no big eyes and little U's in this place, right? We're all on the same level with God, and we want to go up a level. Amen? Hallelujah. So he goes on and he says, uh, let us stop going over basic teachings about Christ again. And again, I want to read this to you again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Do you hear that? Mature in your understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. This is so huge. You've got to get this solid and firm foundation in your life so that you can have a life. Without this, you ain't got a life. It starts with understanding grace and faith. Say this with me. It starts with understanding grace and faith. And I do, in Jesus' name. You may not know it yet, but you just said that by faith, and God's going to begin to explode that upon you. Let's not waver in knowing that we are right with God only on the basis of faith and nothing else. I know you've heard this for 10 years. Well, not 10 years. Some of you have been here for 10 years, but for however long many years you've been here, you're going to hear this over and over again. You are justified by plus nothing. Romans 5.1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. We keep judgment out by reminding ourselves that we are justified by faith and grace alone. No matter how mature we get in Christ or how immature you might feel, we live by trusting Jesus and not by feeling good. We live by trusting Jesus and not by feeling good. Somebody ought to write a song to that. Maybe I'll do that. Kind of goes like this, and here's how it goes. Amen. We walk by faith, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent, consistent with what? Our confidence in God. Yeah. Hallelujah. We live by believing and not by seeing. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. We acknowledge emotions and feelings, but we don't live by them. All right. This is just the introduction this morning. I want you to know when you start living by your feelings, that's where the enemy will begin to attack you. I feel good today. It must be, I must be Christian. and God must be happy with me. I feel bad today. God must be sore at me. He saw what I did, I guess. God wants you to stop your wavering and start being solid in your relationship with God when you get up in the morning, no matter how you feel. You know you're right with him. And you're, son, you're his son or daughter that he's brought you to faith by grace, that you know you've been forgiven, hallelujah, and you got a smile on your face. That rhyme. 2 Peter 1.3. And this is what we're going to, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this today, but we are going to spend some time on this in the next few weeks. So just, if you want to read 2 Peter, okay, chapter 1, verses 3 through about 8, you'll be ahead of the game, because that's what we're going to start focusing on. His divine power has bestowed on us Absolutely everything. Does anybody know what absolutely everything means? In the Greek, it means A-L-L. -L. What does that spell? Oh, he's given you everything you'll ever need. You don't need to ask him for more faith. You don't need to ask him for more peace. 
He's already given it to you. Your faith will grow automatically, right? Have you ever seen a tomato plant grunting and growing to produce strawberries? It doesn't produce strawberries, does it? What does a tomato plant produce? You guys are smart. Nothing gets by you. But when you go out there and you get your ear to the tomato plant, you don't hear it grunting and groaning, right? It automatically produces tomatoes. And so will you if you just trust, rely, rest, and act on God. Amen. Because he's absolutely given you everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life. I want a dynamic spiritual life, don't you? Yes. And sometimes you've got to push through your feelings. Sometimes you've got to push through the negative things that other people will tell you. Sometimes you've got to push through your old family or your past and really go for the future in God. Amen? Yes. Does the enemy want you to do this? Absolutely not. How do you do this, this dynamic spiritual life and godliness? Through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. I want to hit one thing this morning, as his divine power, just that one statement. Power in the Greek is a Greek word that we've used before called dunamis, all right? Dunamis is the force and the energy of God. His force and energy has given you everything. Has given, which tense is has given? Past tense. The root word, the root word for this is to have the strength and the ability to act. Look at me for a minute. You can do this. You can do this Christian thing. Why? Because you have the strength and ability, the power to act that's been put in you when you became born again. This doesn't happen by going to church or giving money, right? I know you guys already know this. We're not saved by what we do. We are saved by what we believe. The other day, I goofed up really bad. Did something real. I got angry about something like Will was talking about. I don't know. I got angry about something. You ever get those, get peeved and, ooh, ah, ah. And I thought, man, Lord, I can't believe that's still there. And you know what? The Lord told me something. It just broke my heart. It was, it was so beautiful. He said, you're not what you're, you do, Mark. You're what I've made you. You're not what you do. You are who I've made you. I was like, wow, thank you, Dad. I don't want to be that. I want to be who you've made me. How about you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've been given this power, and this power, the strength and ability to act, has given us everything we need. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to have your mom say amen. That just, just makes the day. Amen. I'm going to give you four quick things, and I'm going to dig some of the things out of this treasure chest here in just a minute. Number one, so Christ himself gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. One of the things he's given us is the five-fold ministry. Why? To do the work for you and me, to do the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry isn't this. The work of the ministry is all of us handing out food yesterday, cleaning the building when it needs it. Helping somebody move like Terry five or six times and not complaining about it. <laughs> Amen. She wore Steve out, I think. I don't know. But I want you to know he's given us gifts in the church. This five-fold ministry that comes by the Spirit so that we'll all fulfill number two. And this is 1 Corinthians 12, 7. The spiritual gift that he has given you. A spiritual gift is what? Given. given. What tense is given? Past. He's given you a spiritual gift to each one of us so that we can do what? Help each other. Isn't that good? I like that. No yawning in church. I saw that. So he's given us gifts of the Spirit. Number three, what else has he given us? Galatians 5, through 23, he has given you the fruits of the Spirit. The result of his presence within us is the result of what in us? His presence is in you. I don't know. Even when you get angry, even when you fail, you're not a failure, right? 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 Even like the Holy Spirit told me, he said, you know, it's not what you do, it's who you are. That's really what he told me. It's not the mistakes that you're making. It's who you are in me that counts. 
made me look right past that mistake. I didn't spend two minutes screwing around worrying about it. Yeah. I let it go. And I started focusing on who am I? Who are we in Christ? Who? Well, I'll give you my old pastor's favorite scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Yeah. In Christ, you are a new creation. Yes. Your old life is gone. Behold, all has become new. Hallelujah. All right. Within us is love, unselfish concern for others. Unselfish concern for others. Uh, I love you guys. And when you come down and you give, like you did yesterday morning, it's that unselfish love for others. That's the gift. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The working of the Holy Spirit is those things. Isn't that wonderful? Joy, which is happiness, inner peace, patience. Now listen, what is patience? This is the definition of it right out of the Bible. Not the ability to wait, but how we act while we wait. Not the ability to wait, but how you acting while God's got you on waiting. He's got you on simmer, right? You're waiting for something. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Wow. Guess where that lives? It's not out there in space somewhere. It's not just written on the pages of this book, but it's written on the inside of your heart. It's there. You got this. Hallelujah. Number four is 1 Corinthians 2.12. Now we have received. We have been given. Not the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God so that we may know and understand the wonderful things freely given to us from God. So quit telling yourself, I don't know this, I don't understand this. Yes, you do. Some of you still don't believe me. But you do. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. It hasn't gone from here to there. Right? Yes. Yes. You have already been given the Spirit who helps us to know and understand everything the Lord has freely given to us. Amen? Amen. This is good word. Yes. I'm preaching this to me. If you're not listening to it, at least I, I, I mean, I know you're listening, but I'm listening too. God told me this, and Will said this last night in our Bible study. We do our part, and God will do his part. He will not do your part, and you cannot do his part. So it's time to get up. We're resting and trusting in him. And we are going to act. We are not going to let this go. It's time. Can you say amen? amen. He amen. gives us wood. But I've never seen wood crawl out of a forest and make a house by itself. Have you? No. no. He gives us the abilities and the intelligence to take the wood and build the house. Right? Yes. You are building your spiritual house and you can't get it done with a half-butted effort. You're going to have to get yourself and talk to yourself alone Self? Yeah. It's time to get into this thing. You think so? Yeah. Turn off the TV, would you? Okay. Turn off the radio for a while. All right. Quit listening to that CD. Get off your devices. I thought it was cute. I saw somebody on Facebook the other day put on there. They had dinner and wouldn't allow their daughters to use their Facebook and other devices at the table. And one of them that is kind of used to doing that kind of almost had withdrawal. Started shaking. <laughs> Sometimes you got to turn off Facebook. In fact, I'll tell you what, a lot of stuff I see on Facebook needs to be turned off anyway. And get your face in the book. That's a Gary Krollism. I remember when Gary shared that, we went, that is good, brother. Get off Facebook and get your face in the book. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, I'm going to show you this this morning real quick. And uh, we'll pray and let you go home here. Now, it takes action to open up the treasure chest. You've got to do this yourself. I can't do it for you. And God will not do it for you. Remember, we do our part, right? And God does his part. He can't, he's not going to do your part, and you can't do his part. Your part is to open up the treasure chest and begin to look and see what's in here. Like... Oh, look what he gave us. Faith makes all things possible. Oh, postscript on that, not easy. Wow, thank you, Lord. I want to get that in my brain. How about you? 
That's a gift. God's given you a gift of? Has given. Right? He has given us abundantly everything we need to live this life. He's given you faith. Amen. Ah, I put these in there. You know what this represents, right? This is the quick picker upper. When you screw up and you make a little soiled thing, you just whoop, take the forgiveness of God and clean it up. How many times do you do that? I don't know how many sheets are on this roll, but I'll tell you what. God's got lots of rolls of paper towels for you to use. Your forgiveness never stops. It's always there. You can apply it all the time. Thank you, Lord. I was sweating that one out, you know. Oh, here's another one. The light bulb of understanding and knowledge in how God works. You can put this on top of your head and bingo. Hey, I really do begin to understand that. I'm really beginning to see what God is saying. I'm beginning to understand what he means when he says he loves me and he wants me to change. Hallelujah. Bing. And that's not everything that's in there. There's lots more in there that I could show you this morning. In fact, let me ask you this. How many have been praying for peace? Anybody? Okay. Guess what in your treasure chest? Peace is already there. It's already there. You just got to pull it out. Take it from there to here. Thank you for your peace, Lord. Thank, you know, instead of asking God a lot of times, you know what you know to begin to do? Thank you, Father, for your peace. Thank you, Father God, for your understanding. Thank you for your faith working in me. There is one more I wanted to get to because a lot of people are looking for this. I see this on Facebook a lot. God also has for you happiness. His happiness will not leave you a mess, but his happiness will give you peace and joy and fulfillment, right? So where are you going to get your happiness from? A brand new car. No. Where are you going to get your happiness from? Oh, she's so beautiful. No. Where are you going to get your happiness from? From God himself. He's already given it to you. So instead of, oh, God, give me happiness, you can just say, hey, Father, thanks, Dad, for giving me happiness. Help me see what it is. Help me understand how it works. Help me, God, to see this the way that you see it. Amen? This, my brothers and sisters, is just like this much of this much that he's put within every one of you that believes. All this, and you may not ever use this. It's up to you. You know, I use that analogy when you get up to heaven and you're standing there before the throne. God blessed you. And you see all these unopened Christmas presents around you, piled up high, maybe so high you can't hardly see around them. You know what the Holy Spirit's going to tell you when they, you get there? These are all the gifts I gave you that you never opened when you were on earth. Take the time to open them up. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He has given us the Holy Spirit so we might know and understand the wonderful things freely given to us by God. God. Hallelujah. He takes what is impossible and makes it possible for us. Yes. Aren't you glad that he does? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Thank you, God. Well, I got one more scripture. Can I read this to you? And then, yes. I'll, and then we'll, we'll quit. This is out of Matthew chapter 6, 33. And this almost sounds like what I would say to you this morning. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. Not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can to respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fusses over lots of things, right? But you know both God and how he works. Say this with me. I know my God, and I know how he works in Jesus' name. You know what? It would be good for you to write that down and tell yourself that every morning when you get up. I both know God and how he works today. Hallelujah. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. That's Matthew 6.33. First and most importantly, seek or aim at or strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his righteous ways of doing things and being right, the attitude and the character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. So, the question is, you got it yet? Say yes. 
You don't know it yet, but you do got it. He's providing, now listen, and we'll pray. He's providing progressive revelation, bringing you into a spiritual evolution because what he wants to do is a total revolution in your life. If you're ready to take what God has given you by eliminating compromise, then this is for you, bud. Instead of this bud being for you, this is for you, bud. You get it? You get everything? Amen. Well, that's good. Hallelujah. A progressive revelation. Now, I, some of you out there, I don't know if you're all believers or not, but I want you to know that today we come as we are. And through Christ's love and his blood and his sacrifice on the cross, we can become everything he is. Jesus lives in you. You're just a bunch of little Jesuses running around. You might as well just put on a robe and some sandals. You know what I'm saying? You are his representation on this earth. And if you're ready to take what God has given you by eliminating compromise, I want you to stand. If you're ready to do it, stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me, if you would, please, real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. This morning, before we go from one thing to the next, you got to use this, so let's use it together, amen? As your heads are bowed, maybe this morning you've never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, or maybe you did it a long time ago, and you need to renew your faith in Christ this morning. Now is the time to do this. So if the Holy Spirit's tugging at your heart, and God's saying, come to life, this morning, we want to give you an opportunity to do just that. He wants to forgive you of all your sins. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart before, today is the day to do it. If that's you, if you've never said to Christ, forgive me of my sins and to come into my life and take me over, raise your hand if that's you. If you've never done that before, anybody? Never done it before. All right? Now, maybe you've done it a long time ago, but you need restoration that's you this morning, lift up your hand if you need to do that this morning. I see these hands. Amen. Hallelujah. If you lifted your hand, I want you to come down to the front of the, the uh, sanctuary here real quick. Just come down to the front of this little table. I want to pray with you real quick. Amen. If you raise your hand, you want to really do this. You want to be fully committed to Jesus today. Hallelujah. Amen. Come down front real quick. We're going to pray. You that are out, stretch your hands towards these. And if you feel led, you can come down here and pray with them too. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. Touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Father, I thank you. You gave us not a, a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and power and a good sound mind. I thank you for blessing my sister now. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that the call has been heard in this heart of no compromise. Let her, God, give herself totally to you this morning. And know, daughter, that the Holy Spirit has said that God has received you as his own. You're his daughter. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's heard the cry of your heart. God wants you to know that he's moving and working. Just don't give up. Don't you lose heart. Don't you look at what people say or those that you prayed for, what they might do. For God's a working. <laughs> He's working. So when you pray, just thank Him for working in them. Don't ask Him, thank Him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Oh, God. Adam, I need you to come here too. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you for Adam and Tina. Yeah. I thank you that you're taking them through some tests, God, that you're going to make them stronger, more caring, more aware yeah. of who you are in them people. Remember, God does not look at your mistakes and your faults. He's looking at what he's put in you and who you are in Christ. So yeah. be encouraged this morning. 
that God's answering your prayers. And he wants you to change the way you pray and start thanking him for everything. Thanking for things that you think you have yet. And Adam, I know a little bit about what's going on, but I want you to know, my brother, don't you fret or worry. God's got everything under control. He's working in ways you don't even see. And even though that strong desire of your heart is very, very present. God wants you to know, give that to me. And I will bring things to pass you know not of. Yeah. 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 Don't be worried, you guys are fretful. That's the root of this anger. And God would say, let it come to me. For I have created in you a new heart, a new life. You are mine. Wow, I can't wait to see how he's going to work it out. I just can see it in the spirit. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Amen. What's your name, sir? Brian. Brian. Brian, have you ever asked Jesus into your life before? When did you do that? In jail last year. Awesome. Praise God. Now, I just want you to pray this after me, okay? You ready? Father God, I come to you this morning. My heart, I desire no compromise in my life. I want to live for you. I surrender my will. I submit my heart and my mind to think your thoughts in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father God, I pray for blessing upon him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Brian, this is a new day for you. God's saying you can leave your past behind if you want to. You don't need to think about your past anymore because it is past. Yeah. Think of it this way. Have you ever driven a car before? Have you ever tried to drive a car looking in the rearview mirror? It can't happen. You'll have a wreck. You have to drive your car looking through the windshield in the front, right? God's saying, I'm your new windshield. Look forward, not backward. Yeah. When the enemy tries to tell you about your past, you tell him about his future because he has none. But you do. Father, I thank you for blessing Jesus. him in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you for your blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God, Jesus. for your blessing on the top of the head to the yeah. soles of the feet. Of your child, I thank you, God, for yeah. pulling him out of darkness. Send him in the light. This is just the beginning for you. Yeah. Just the beginning. God has great things for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Stretch your hands towards Vicki. She's not feeling too good. Father, we just speak to this body. Father, we can't heal anybody of anything, but Jesus, you can. So we just lift her up to you right now in Jesus' precious name. And we pray, God, that you'll be able to think clearly, that her body will respond right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We speak life and health and the healing of the Scripture and the living word, Jesus, yeah. into this life right now. Yeah. Be at peace, Vicki. Breathe through your nose and out the mouth. Just relax. Big deep breath. Let it out your mouth. Just, just relax. Be at peace, girl. Be at peace. That's it. Be at peace. Father, let that peace of God overtake her in Jesus' name. And we thank you for doing it, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, some of you need to give Brian a hug today before he leaves. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else need prayer before we go? Let's pray for his mom real quick. Be prayer too. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just lift up Clayton's mom to you right now. He's asked for prayer. She's been having problems with her stomach. I thank you, God, that you know the answer. We just lift her up right now. And we ask your blessing on her in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, pray, God, by your hand right now on her that we'll hear a good report that her stomach will be at peace. 
Lord, touch her mind. I feel like she's got a lot of things going on in her head of worry and, and doubt and fear and, and anxiety and, and uh, just real condemnation from the enemy. We come against that. We bind that up in the name of Jesus by the authority of Jesus Christ who was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So Satan, we just speak to you right now. Get off of her mind and get out of her way in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for a good report. Amen. Stretch your hands towards Dennis. He's having some health issues, and we're going to believe God together with our brother. I'm going to anoint you with frankincense. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the healing power of God. That dunamis power from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Holy Spirit, we pray healing and health right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Dennis, there's a mind-body connection. And the, the Word says that if you have peace in your mind, that'll send health to your body. In fact, it says in Proverbs, a merry heart, a heart of happiness, does good to the body like a medicine. So just feel that happiness in your heart and your mind today. Turn to that. Reject any worry and any doubt and any fear. For God is your God. He is controlling your life. He is the one that you've submitted your heart to. And He wants to heal you. Do you want to be healed? I believe you do. So, Father, we pronounce health and healing on Him in the mighty name of Jesus. We mix our faith with His faith. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have I give unto thee. Rise up in the sun and walk with God. Thank you, Father, for healing him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I need you guys to come around them. They need support. Amen. We pray with them. Right. Yes. yes. Oh, well, actually, all three of you. Thank you, Father, for this family. All right. I'm telling you, the challenge is going to be, Nikki, for you to allow yourself to put God first and worry second. It's going to be a pro. You're going to have to really strive to do this. Because I sense the enemy tries to grip you with fear of the future, fear of what's going on now, uh, a lot of discombobulation, a lot of uh, negative energy. And God's telling me right now to tell you, give it to me. And if you do that, you're going to have that peace of mind and heart that you desire. God's put you two together. He's going to work this stuff out. It ain't going to be easy, but it is possible. It's not possible if you quit, but it is possible if you just gut it out. Tay, you guys are just going to have to press through some of these things together. Amen. Father, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just pray for Tay and for Nikki. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for rising up big in them. Let them focus on their spiritual life on turning all of this over to you. The Bible says don't keep your cares and worries. It says to cast your cares and worries on Him. And when you do this, Nikki, the peace of God is going to flood you and overtake you. I speak health to this body in the name of Jesus. Miraculous healing power of God to this body in Jesus' name. I come against the enemy who would try to bring division and a spirit of argumentativeness to this couple. I bind it up and command it to leave them alone in Jesus' name. I speak peace to their hearts and minds now by the mighty power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for doing it, Lord. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Love you. God's going to work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Somebody want to leave. I see that.
Amen. Thank you for touching my brother, God. Thank you for healing his body. Thank you for putting a determination in him, God, to fight through the worry, the doubt, and the fear, like we all do, to go forward with you. I know his life is one of no compromise to you, God. Let it continue to grow in his heart. Ah, uh, hear this, Ty. God is confident in you. Your confidence in God is great, but God wants you to know his confidence in you is even greater. And that he's got great things for you. Fret not. Don't be of a, a doubtful heart or hurt. For the Lord your God is going to bring you through and make you a strong witness to others of who he is. He loves you with an everlasting love that will never end. So be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Ah, uh, that's not strong in yourself. Strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Yeah. Thank you for that now, Father. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you guys. We love you. Amen. Be blessed. Go home and enjoy your day. Amen. Yes. I know. Thank you.